I'm Ollie Douglas and I'm the curator of Merrill Collections and I'm here in the stores at the museum to show you a series of cartoon designs for some wall hangings that were produced for the Festival of Britain in 1951. Um, and these were produced by an artist called Michael O'Connell to depict different topographies, different regional uh, aspects of farming from around the UK in 1951. What they show us are field systems and different types of farming from those counties and areas. So this is Rutland and above it we have Kent uh, and this is, the, this is the wall hanging that's on display in the museum galleries downstairs. And in the Kent wall hanging we have hop, uh, hop farms and smaller field systems and a lot of this is based on the kinds of soil that are in these particular regions. So the kinds of farming and farmland that we have is heavily based on what kinds of soil uh, are in those places. So we're here in uh, the Year on the Farm gallery to explore some of the objects and tools and technologies involved in arable farming and how these are used to manipulate the soil uh, and change its structure and to change its properties. So behind me are several ploughs and those ploughs would be used to break up the soil in major ways prior to planting. But on top of that there are seeding technologies like this seed drill, the orange object, this cultivator used to break up again the soil and this harrow at the back used to scarify and, 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 and break the surface. As well as that, we have manuring forks and other objects involved in fertilizing and enriching that soil and making it full of nutrients ready for those plants to grow. In some cases though, both in agriculture and in gardening contexts, people have moved increasingly towards no-till solutions, which means none of these technologies involved in breaking up the soil are adopted, and instead we sow onto the soil and allow it to, to work itself in much more natural ways. Okay, so we're here in the wagon walk, uh, and these are vehicles from uh, traditional English farms that can help tell us something about the story of soil. So, on the left we have a Shropshire wagon with thick tyres, covered with strakes, which feature these uh, novel nails to attach the, the tire bands to the wheels. And this helps navigate over the thick, claggy soils of Shropshire. And we can compare this to the thinner tires on the Cornish wagon, uh, which are designed to cope with the much drier soil types that you get in Cornwall. So really what this is about is designing wagons to cope with particular regional soil types. So the soils have a profound impact on the design of the wagons and the way that we see them here today. So we're here in the Town and Country Gallery and we're looking at some ephemera and objects uh, associated with Glastonbury Festival. And why does that relate to our story of soil? Well, Glastonbury Festival is a great example of the environmental and climactic conditions and the impact that that can have on soil surfaces. We all know that in a wet year, Glastonbury turns into a quagmire. In a dry year, it's a good solid surface to walk around on. So beside the Glastonbury Festival ephemera, we also have welly boots that belong to Michael Evis, the founder of Glastonbury Festival, even with a bit of genuine worthy farm mud or possibly something else on the bottom of them. And why is this important for our town and country lives? Well, in the countryside we can see that obvious link between the wetness and the, the soil surface becoming churned up and, and muddy. In the town, this is, this is also the case, but what's important in the town is that increased solid, hard standing surfaces are causing water runoff, and water runoff can be incredibly damaging to the, the wider environment. We've come upstairs to the accessible stores of the museum and we're looking at the land drainage tile collections. Now land drainage tiles, what are they? How do they relate to the story of soil? Well what's important about these is that if you imagine the churned up surface of a muddy farm and most of the fields are actually well managed and the water in them is well managed, that farmland, uh, the water in it is managed by things like these, drainage tiles that run across those fields uh, and manage the water running beneath them. And what's interesting about some of these is that you can see there's a range of different shapes. Some of the earlier ones are these horseshoe shaped ones and these would have been traditionally turned across the knee. The later ones obviously forming a full pipe. And what's also interesting about these is that these are essentially made from soil. So these are made from clay that's been harvested from beneath the surface where ultimately the pipes are intended to go using objects like this. So a clay spade, objects designed for working with clay with soil. So you have objects designed to work with clay to make clay pipes that end up managing water beneath the soil. 